the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. 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 My dear sisters and brothers, how are you? All well? Everything is good? Perhaps my question was wrong. I should not have asked you that question. Even when I asked that question, I should not have expected you to answer me sincerely. We do this all the time. Someone would ask, how are you? And we casually say, oh, wonderful. Everything is well. But we don't mean that, do we? Everything is never all well in our lives. And that's a fact. A fact that we need to understand. A fact that we need to address to. I remember a friend of mine came to me. He said to me, Augustine, I'm going to States, United States, for studies. I do not know anything about that country. Uh, could you tell me how to go about when I reach there? I told him, my friend, United States of America is a very cultured country. And therefore, you need to be very cultured. And that means you need to pretend a lot. That's what culture means often. I told him, you must smile at everyone even when there's no joy in your heart. You must reach your hand out and give a shake and warm shake hand even if there's no warmth in your heart. You must dance even when there's no celebration in your midst. That's what culture means. I told him someone would invite you for a meal. Even before the meal begins, you must say, wonderful. And every three minutes, you must repeat it. Wonderful. And when you come home after the meal, you must ring back and tell them, oh, what a wonderful time we had. That's what culture means. Well, my friend went to the United States and after a few months a wonderful lady invited him for a meal and what was served was steak steak raw done not cooked very much a lot of meat he did not like it at all so he was cutting it into pieces and putting it in the mouth and gulping it down. After some time, the lady asked him, Father, how is the food? And spontaneously he said, horrible. That's when he remembered my instructions. He said, ah, I mean wonderful. We tell the truth only by mistake. And that's a culture. We tell the truth only by mistake. We're used to a lot of pretensions. And this has become a way of living. You know what happens in the process? The casualty of this way of living is our hearts. Our hearts get dried up. Even when there's a lot of sadness in my heart, I'm not able to express my sadness. You know why? 
if i express my sadness i would not be accepted i would not be accepted and the most painful thing in our life is to be rejected by anyone and we would do anything to be accepted it's a beautiful book written by john powell an american psychologist the name of the book is why i am afraid to tell you what i am in the book the psychologist priest says all of us are afraid all of us are afraid to let others know what we really are and therefore we cover up we cover up and it is this culture of pretensions that is being encouraged everywhere how is the tv industry flourishing how is the tv industry flourishing the tv all the tvs in our houses are telling us you know what hey you are stinking you are stinking they may not say it in so many words but that's what they show a teenager boy and girl the boy and the girl come very close when they come close the boy turns away suddenly and the girl got the message she's thinking you know what she does i speak about the tv ads you know what she does she goes and buys she goes and sits before the tv all depressed that's when she sees a toothpaste a new toothpaste and that toothpaste she buys in bulk and goes on brushing her teeth so what the tv tells us is this all of you are stinking fair and lovely all of you are very bad looking in order to look good you apply fair and lovely or whatever other ointment and we run after this ointments this toothpaste when we run after this ointments and toothpaste there is a thought a thought brewing in our hearts i'm not good looking all the good looks i have come from fair and lovely all the 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 good the good way to attract others is a toothpaste and in the process a lot of damage is done to our hearts our hearts get closed up to the sadness to the sorrow to the guilt to the anger inside of us my dear sisters and brothers this is when we need to understand what jesus came for jesus came for giving us peace hallelujah then all of us raise our hands and say hallelujah 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 what is peace peace is the tranquility in our hearts the cleanliness in our hearts i'm so clean i'm so acceptable i'm so good in my heart i feel a tranquility in my heart a peace in order to get that peace my heart must be clean there should be nothing suffocating in my heart if there is anything suffocating in my heart i will have no peace i will have no peace we try to apply powder we try to brush with the new paste all the time 
we try to apply all the ointments all the time when i apply the ointments deep inside me there's a sorrow i'm not good enough i'm not good enough inside therefore i need to look good outside i'm trying to look good outside all the time we are trying to look good outside all the time we are going about pleasing everyone all the time we are going about telling everyone how good how wonderful everything is but i know deep inside i'm stinking deep inside i'm sad deep inside i'm guilty deep inside i'm feeling terrible jesus came not to give us any ointment to to attract others by applying it on my face jesus came to give us the balm of the holy spirit to take away all that is stinking inside all the sadness all the sorrow all the guilt inside of me and that's what sin is that's what sin is when jesus was born in bethlehem god the father sent the angels to proclaim to the world the purpose of the coming of jesus what did the angels sing what did the angels sing when jesus was born in bethlehem glory to god in the highest and peace on earth peace on earth to men and women of good will who are the men and women of good will the men and women of good will are the people who are turned to god who are clean to give them the peace give us peace that's what jesus came for and what did jesus do jesus went about giving peace to everyone right he went about giving peace to everyone the woman caught in adultery a woman who lost all the peace she wasted a whole life in sin in wretchedness she knows she was thinking and yet she lived that sort of a life and finally she was caught she was brought to the presence of jesus by the pharisees and the scribes and they said to him rabbi this woman is caught in adultery she is to be stoned to death a terrible end to a miserable life jesus decided to give her peace but to how to give her peace jesus decided to give her peace by forgiving her it is forgiveness that makes us men and women of good will it is forgiveness that brings us peace and jesus said to her go in peace do not sin again well jesus said it in a beautiful way jesus told the pharisees and the scribes the first one to throw the stone at her shall be one without sin and all of them looked into their hearts they realized how stinking their lives were all of them went away jesus and the woman were left alone jesus said to her go in peace i do not condemn you i do not condemn you go in peace do not sin again my dear sisters and brothers this is what jesus said all the time i do not condemn you go in peace the lepers who came to jesus the lepers were a condemned lot of people they could not come where the people were living they would be chased out of society 
by being stoned. They had to go to the mountains, remote areas. But they came to Jesus. Jesus touched and healed them. Gave them peace. Zacchaeus, a man ostracized. A man who knew his life was in a terrible mess. Because he was a greedy man. Making money through all sinful ways. A greedy man. And he knew that. And he felt the burden of it. The heaviness of sin in his heart. With all that heaviness, he climbed up into a sycamore tree. Waiting for Jesus. Jesus called him by name. Zacchaeus, come down. And Jesus said to him, today, peace, salvation is come to this family. Jesus gave him peace. Peace in his family. The good thief, Jesus gave him paradise. Peace, paradise. And Jesus said to the disciples, I will give him my peace. Not as the world gives. The world will not be able to take away that peace from you. So the peace that Jesus gives is what the world will not be able to take away from us. Peace that only Jesus can give. Why? Jesus said, I have authority. I have authority to forgive sins on earth. Mark chapter 2. I have authority to forgive sins on earth. My dear sisters and brothers, Jesus went about giving peace to everyone. And this is what Jesus wants to do to us. To every one of us today. Whenever we come to Jesus, the one thing Jesus wants to give us is peace because only Jesus can give it. Only Jesus can give it. Only Jesus has authority to forgive sins. Remember Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth is given to me. Only Jesus can give it. When Jesus gives us the peace by forgiving our sins, nothing in the world, no one in the world will be able to take that peace away. That's the peace that we are waiting for from Jesus and Jesus gives us the peace with a clear sign. With a clear sign. Let me read for you, my dear sisters and brothers. Has anyone brought the Bible by mistake? John chapter 20, verses 19 onwards. On the evening of that first day of the week when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them peace be with you peace be with you my dear sisters and brothers there's something beautiful about this greeting whenever Jesus appeared to the disciples after the resurrection, Jesus always said, peace be with you. He continued saying it again and again. There's a reason for this. He went about giving peace to individuals. It's a case to the woman caught in adultery, to the good thief. But on the cross, Jesus took upon himself all the sin of the humankind. All the heaviness in the heart of the humankind. All the destruction in the heart of the humankind. And Jesus forgave. Jesus forgave all the sin. Jesus took authority finally on the cross. Finally on the cross, Jesus took authority over everything sinful. Over all the powers of sin. He took authority and he dispelled the darkness of sin in the splendor of the glory of the resurrection. 
And then Jesus came. Jesus came and gave peace. You would note that very clearly. In all the times Jesus appeared to anyone, disciples, um, Mary of Magdala, Jesus always gave them peace. That's what Jesus came for. As the angels proclaimed in Bethlehem, and Jesus achieved it on the cross because he defeated the powers of evil holding us captive. He defeated the powers of evil and he went about giving peace to everyone. He did that to the apostles as well. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord rejoiced, great joy came upon them. Joy, peace and joy always go together. Where there is peace, there is joy. Where there is joy, there is peace. You know, um, joy is a very rare commodity today. There are a lot of pleasures and luxuries, offers given to us to make us make our lives more secure, more luxurious. And yet, there's no offer given to us to make our lives more joyful. No. No. There is joy only where there is peace. As someone said, you just scratch the skin today. What comes out is not blood, but tears. Tears flowing down. Our body and mind, so much of sorrow. Why so much of sorrow? So much of sorrow because we allow the painful memories of the past to linger back. All the painful memories, all the hurts of the past, I will come back to that later. All the hurts of the past. These hurts remain hurting us, bothering us all the time. No peace, no joy. But the disciples, when they received the peace of Jesus, they rejoiced exceedingly, we are told. Everyone who wants to be happy, who wants to rejoice, the first thing to do is to go for confession, take that stench of sin out of your heart. Take that suffocation of sin out of your heart. The disciples rejoiced exceedingly. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. The greeting given again, as the Father has sent me, so I sent you. As the Father has sent me, so I sent you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven, whose sins you retain are retained. My dear sisters and brothers, a beautiful moment in the ministry of Jesus. He went about giving peace to everyone individually. And then he took the powers of sin on the cross and defeated the powers of evil. And he came back to the disciples and gave them peace. Now Jesus wanted to give peace to everyone in the world till the end of times. That's what Jesus came for. To give peace to everyone in the world to the end of times. And for this, Jesus had chosen the apostles, 12 apostles. Jesus had trained them. Now it was time, Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. The power of God, the Holy Spirit. Remember, in the first sermon of Jesus, in Nazareth, in the synagogue. Jesus said, 
quoting prophet Isaiah chapter 61. Jesus said, I'm come anointed by the Holy Spirit, anointed by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the good news. Jesus was sent by the Father. Jesus was sent by the Father, anointed by the Holy Spirit in authority to proclaim the good news. Now the same Holy Spirit Jesus gave to the apostles. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you in authority with the same power of the Holy Spirit. You go and tell every sinful person, peace be with you. When you say it, my peace shall flow into them. And for this, you have the authority of the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Shall all of us raise our hands and say hallelujah. 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 My dear sisters and brothers, there is a beautiful mystery unfolding here. A beautiful mystery of salvation. A great plan of God unfolding. A plan of God to give us peace. Give us peace all the time by taking away the sin, by giving us an assurance, an assurance of the forgiveness of sin. A sign, in fact, a sign that our sins are forgiven. You know, today, you and I, when we kneel down before a priest, a priest, a priest is the successor of the apostles. The Holy Father, the Pope, the bishops, and the priests who are united with the bishops. The priests are the successors of the apostles. Today, when you and I kneel down before a priest and confess, and the priest raises his hands and gives you the absolution of authority, what happens? You are connected. We are connected through the ministry of that priest to the cross. And forgiveness flows tangibly with a visible, tangible sign. The forgiveness flows. The forgiveness flows into us. My dear sisters and brothers, this is what the sacrament of confession is. And let us understand the great wisdom and the great mercy in the heart of Jesus to institute this great sacrament, to give us the assurance, assurance of the forgiveness of our sin. And this is what the Lord is doing to us. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.